Hello and welcome to the Games Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and creating a dust ambient effect in Unreal 4. Now, you may also hear this referred to as dust speckles or even fireflies. It's a pretty simple effect, but it's in just about every game. And typically, it is just an ambient effect, and we usually use it in combination with lighting. But it can be used for other things, such as gameplay or pulling the attention of the player. So with that out of the way, to get this started, I'm going to right click in my content browser and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty blank template. And we'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll open that up. So first things first, we need to spawn something. So in emitter update, I'm going to add a spawn rate and I'm going to set this to be 30. And then I'll save and we'll let it compile because now that we're spawning something, we can see that we're also spawning all these particles on top of each other. And I want to give them a bigger location to spawn in different areas. So in particle spawn, I'm going to add a location. And that location is going to be a box location. And in the box size, we're going to make this a little bit bigger. So in the X, it'll be 300, Y 300, and Z 300. And once that compiles, you can see that we have this box that they're all spawning in. But our particles are a little big. So I'm going to come to Initialize Particle, and under Sprite Attributes, the Sprite Size Mode, we're going to change this to be Random Uniform. And in here, I'll set the Min to be 0.75, and then the Max, I'm actually going to randomize this as well. So I'm going to look for Random, and there's Random Range Float, and this is going to be set to be the Minimum 1, and the Maximum will be 7. We'll just save, and then let's take a look at what we have here. So we'll play, and this isn't too bad. Now, the next thing we're noticing here is that each one of these particles are just popping in and out. And now, if that's what you want, it's totally fine. But in my case, I want these to fade in and then fade out. So I'm going to come to Particle Update, and I'm going to add a Scale Color. And then in the Scale Alpha, I'm going to change this to be a Curve so that over time we can fade out, but more importantly, so we can fade in. So right about 0.12 here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add a key. And I'm actually gonna leave that key right there because I don't want these particles to ever be fully opaque. So I'm gonna select the first key and I'm gonna set this to zero. So we're fading in and we're fading out. And then I'm gonna select each one of the keys and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna set these to auto so that they smooth out. And now if we go and play that, we just see that they're fading in and they're fading out. Pretty cool. Now, if you also wanted some size on this, you could do that as well. So under particle update, since these are sprites, I'm gonna look for size and you should be able to find scale sprite size. And now with this, we're gonna change the X and Y to be uniform. So we'll change this into a float. And then this float, will change into a curve. And now we can do the same thing that we did with the color. But I think I'll put the key a little further down, about here, and then I'll set this value to be one, and then this first key I'll set to be zero. And then we'll grab each one of these and we'll smooth them out. So let's take a look at what we have here now. See they're scaling in getting bigger and then getting smaller. And that might be a little much. So I think I'm gonna add one more key in here so that they can stay in the bigger state a little bit longer. And set this key to one. And then I'll take this one and just move the time down to about here, to about the end. And we'll take a look at that. So they're fading and scaling in. And that looks all right. Now, the next thing we can do is we can give these motion. And there's actually a lot of different ways to give these motion. So the first one is in particle spawn. We're going to add velocity. And now when you add that velocity, it's looking for one of two modules. It's looking for solve forces and velocity or apply initial forces. I'm going to choose fix issue for solve forces and velocity. Once we add that, that'll appear in particle update but I'm actually gonna grab solve forces and velocity and just put it all the way at the bottom of the hierarchy. 
And now back in add velocity, I'm gonna change this to be a random vector. So if I click on this drop down and just type in random, you just see random vector. And now, once we add that, let's go take a look. We can go and play this. You should see that these are slightly moving. It's really hard to tell. So we can turn up our vector scale. I'll set this to something like five. And now if we play, it should be a little more noticeable. You can see that they're just buzzing around, just moving. And that's pretty cool. Now, you can also take add velocity and you can put that in particle update as long as it's above solve forces and velocity. But when you add this in here by default, you'll notice that these are gonna be moving a lot faster. Right, they're zipping around a lot faster. Now you can just change the vector scale, but you also have this evaluation type. And this may come down to a performance thing, but you can change this from spawn only to every frame. And now, if we take a look at what we have, you'll see that they seem a little more lively. You know, they almost seem like fireflies now. So it's up to you how you wanna use add velocity in this case. You could also use noise modules. So if we come up to particle update and we type in noise, you can use a vector noise force or a curl noise. So if we use the vector noise force and we make sure it's above solve forces and velocity, you'll notice that the force amount is set to 200 we let this play, we'll see that this is very similar to that randomized add velocity. And you can increase the force amount, or you could even randomize this force amount. Now, just the same, we can come and add a curl noise, and this will just have a little bit of a different effect. So we'll just save and let that play. And you can see that they're they're moving around, they're not as chaotic, but if we mess with the strength and we mess with the frequency, we can make them a little more chaotic. So you definitely have a lot of options for how you want to make these wisp around. I'm gonna turn off curl noise force, and I didn't mind the add velocity with every frame turned on, so I'm gonna leave it there. And now the last thing to do here is to add color. So it really depends on the lighting, or what you're going for here. In this case, let's take a look at colorizing these, colorizing these for fireflies. So in initialize particle, I'm gonna come to the color mode and I'm gonna change this to be a random range. And for the minimum, I'm gonna change this to be a yellow, somewhere in the middle here. We'll just push this all the way up to full saturation. Hit okay. And then the maximum, I'm gonna make this somewhere in the orange range with full saturation. We'll hit okay. You can see that they're all randomized in here, which is pretty cool. Now I wanna to come to our scale color because I wanna randomize the intensity in here. So right now we have a vector, but I wanna just adjust the intensity. So I'm gonna change this to be a float, and then this value, I'm gonna randomize it. So I'm gonna click on the drop down. I'm gonna choose random range float. And in here, I'll set the minimum to be something like 0.35 and then the maximum, we'll make the maximum something like 60. And now, we'll get a whole variety of different fireflies in here. And if you wanted, you could randomize the maximum even more. It's up to you. So, if you guys thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.